welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how I edit my videos. You guys have been asking about that a lot in the comments and on Instagram. So I thought today I would try and go into as much detail as I can about my process from start to finish. So first off, if you haven't seen my how I film my videos video, I will have that link somewhere on screen and also in the description below. So check that out if you're interested. If you've already seen it or you don't need to see it, then let's get straight to the good stuff. Oh, and before I start, I just want to say I have a Windows laptop. So as much as I'd like to use Final Cut Pro or even iMovie, I currently use two different softwares to edit my videos. One of them is VSDC, which is a free software I will have linked in the description. And the other one is Sony Vegas Pro, which is very much not free, but I have heard that there are some corners of the internet where you can find it for free. So the first thing I need is music. Now, I usually have a song in mind actually before I start filming, just so I have a general idea of how I want the video to look. And you guys ask me all the time where I get my music from, and I normally use SoundCloud. So what I'll do is I'll go on there, I'll search for maybe hip hop or chill music or tropical house or something like that. And then I just find a song and the only thing I do is make sure that it's licensed for commercial use and that's really important. Then, once all my individual clips are loaded onto my computer, I note down which ones need to be sped up and then I load them into VSDC one by one, speed them up to 800% and then export them one by one. So they're still individual clips, they're just eight times faster. So I could then use VSDC to do the rest of my video editing process because it is capable of doing everything that I use Sony Vegas Pro for. I just find that the user interface is a little bit awkward to get used to and I'm not very patient with learning new things. So then I load everything into Sony Vegas Pro, so even the real-time and the sped up versions of my clips, plus my song. And then the first thing I drop into my timeline is the song I'm going to be using. And that gives me an idea of how long the video is going to be. And then any of those sort of beginning shots get dragged onto the timeline too. Then I'll listen to the song for a bit and cut and trim those first few shots to fit with the music. So really all that's left to do after that is to drop all the rest of my clips into the timeline. And as you can see, even the ones that are sped up eight times are still too long for the video. So I'll speed them up again within Vegas Pro. And the reason I don't speed up the whole thing in Vegas Pro from the beginning is that like the SDC, Vegas Pro will only speed things up to I think 8 or 12 times, so it helps to have things already sped up before I've loaded them into Vegas Pro so that I can speed them up even more, if that makes sense. Right, so now to the more interesting bit, how I make my videos a bit more visually interesting. First I make any colour adjustments I need to make, and you'd be surprised how much of an effect that has on the video quality. And then if the video doesn't have a voiceover and it's more focused on the music, I'll start to sort of trim and split clips to fit with the sound wave on the timeline, so the peaks and the dips in the sound wave, so that the video sort of moves to the beat. And then with some static shots, I'll use keyframes to make the image move even though the camera wasn't moving. And I can't really go into explaining keyframing in as much detail as I think it deserves, so I'll try and leave a link in the description to a video that goes through the basics of it for you. And then if my video does have a voiceover, I will just adjust the volume so that you can hear me over the background music, and then I'll cut out all the pauses and the ums and the ahs, because there tend to be a lot of those. And that's really kind of it, but if I want things to be a little bit more interesting, I'll also add some sort of visual effects like maybe glitches or light leaks. And again, I can't really go into detail about layers and blend modes, um, so I'll show you what I do, but I'll also leave a link again to a video that explains it in more detail. And then for the end plates that I have at the end of videos, I usually make them on PicMonkey, which you've probably heard of. It's a great free resource for making pictures and graphics and things. And then all I have to do is pop that into my timeline, put a video on top, my last video on top, and scale that down so it fits in frame. And Bob's your uncle, you've got a finished video. So I really hope this was useful for you guys. If I've missed anything or you've got any more questions, go ahead and comment below and I'll get back to you. Also, I mentioned in my last video that I might do a video on overcoming artist block and a few people said they'd be interested in that. So I'm thinking from now on, every two weeks, I'll do an extra video like that and like this one 
with my normal videos on Tuesdays. So you can expect that artist block video in a fortnight. So in two weeks on Friday. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please do. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.